sound has become one of your main mediums. How has it come to that? Yeah, well, I started working with sound when I did my masters in, in Belfast. I became really interested in the sculptural aspects of sound and how, how it could define architecture, what happens when you project your voice out into space. And you know, thinking about I started thinking about my inner body space when I did that, you know, when I when I uh, sing especially, you know, so you be, I became really aware of of my diaphragm and what happens when uh, yeah the sound is projected out into the room and then you could re it really drew it, uh, your attention to the architecture. So I gradually introduced it into my sculptural installations and um, yeah, so I'm really interested in the sculptural aspects of, of sound and how it defines space and, and also the psychological effects of, of sound and how it can be a trigger for memory and how it can be heighten your sense of yourself while making you aware of the place you're in. And, you know, those have been interests from right from the beginning, right from when I was a student, you know. If you say, you know, it triggers memories, also the ear is a sense that you can't direct as much as the eye. Is that, did you, is, is that something you think about when you, when you conceive your work? Well, I suppose I'm thinking a lot about the place uh, that the work is situated and that often inspires uh, the work, you know when I'm looking for um, inspiration, you know, I'm, I really think about the acoustics of a particular place or the history or the atmosphere and, uh, you know, and how the place sounds, you know, how, how, how the, the sound resonates within the space. And so those are things that are, even if it's, a, you know, like a gallery space, it's, it still has particular acoustics. So I might project my voice or clap my hands and just get a feel of the space um, and the dimensions of the space and and then that's when the ideas begin but until then I, I really find it hard to, to really um, to think of uh, that's where it begins really the, 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 the space you know so you actually go to a space and then develop work specifically for that well that's where usually the ideas start to form you know I, I mean especially when in like expressions like Documenta or Munster Sculpture Project where I made works like this work for Munster Sculpture Project was under the, the bridge uh, that crossed the, the lake and the idea really came when I was there and uh, looking across at the people on the other side and this, uh, this feeling of being apart from or this feeling of separation and, and reflection like, so these, these, these ideas came to me when, while I was standing there, looking across, you know, and this, this feeling of, of looking into a mirror, you know, and this was also reflected in the architecture. And also in Documenta, being on the platform's end, and I could imagine sound coming from a distance, and, you know, these themes of distance and separation are, are actually recurring themes in a, in a lot of my work. What, what, uh, so you, uh, I remember you've been to Faunus and Bailar and what kind of triggered that space or what are you thinking of doing? Well, I really loved the, that you could see out into the gardens and, you know, you know, and, the, and it was, uh, the, you could see the leaves blowing and, you know, and I love this. It was very still and silent within the, in the gallery space, but then you could, you could see you, the, the wind, you know, and so, I mean, I became really interested in um, depictions of, of, of the wind, especially personified winds. And, and so, uh, you know, like in The Birth of Venus by Botticelli or, uh, or, or Stuart and Revit, they, they did these amazing architectural drawings of the Tower of the Winds in Athens. And you have Boreas with his conch. And, and you know, so these, these, this was something that I became really interested in. But then there's a map that from 1545 that was produced in, in Basel actually by Sebastian Münster and it's, it depicts the 12 winds, you know, personified winds. So it's these 12 wind heads, these heads that are blowing into the centre of this incredible detailed map. Of, um, and so I, I really started thinking about uh, the wind, you know, the different winds and so so uh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to create a, an installation that was, was inspired by, by these personified winds and, and, and this, this map.
would generally want to convey with your work? Is there a general theme you're working on and reworking? Well, generally, when I, when I produce work either with my voice or with, with working with other um, like instruments, it's important that the, 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 there's a human presence in the work, like the physicality of producing the sound. You can, you really feel the person, you know, like the, especially a conch shell, which is what I've, I've been using for the work uh, that I will be producing for Byler. These 12 um, tones will be produced with different conch shells from all over the world. And, but it takes a lot of effort to produce a tone from, from the, the conch. And so I really want that to be, be you, you really want you to hear that in the, in the recordings, you know, you, the, 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 the breath, you know. And so that, the breath is, become, is like a metaphor for, for life. And, and I suppose that has been a, a recurring uh, motif in my work, you know, this um, metaphor for, for life and mortality, the human, the human breath. Um, so where do, where would you place yourself in an art historical context or also a context of contemporary art? Never had never considered that really. I suppose the things that in, that I look for inspiration, are, are, you know, are more kind of literature, architecture, film. You know, these are things that that are are and, and place. You know, well, architecture. So 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 yeah. I mean. I mean, I, I really enjoy like Max Newhouse's work uh, when he worked in public space. But yeah, it's no, I have to think more about that one. Sorry. It's all right. Um, how I mean, it surprises because the ear you can't close the ear, or you can, but you have to actively decide to do it. Um, it is, is surprise an element you play with, or that plays a role in your work? Yeah, surprise it has been. Um, like, for instance, the other work that will be in the exhibition, uh, Filter, which is, it was originally installed to, uh, and played through the public address system uh, of the bus station, and but intermittently. So there was definitely an element of surprise. People who are just waiting for their bus, waiting to be somewhere else, not engaged with her surroundings at all. And then all of a sudden, they hear this disembodied voice, which makes, grounds them back into the present moment and they become very aware of the, where they are and who they're sitting beside and the architecture. And, and so they're very, very, you know, so that, that moment of surprise is important in that work for sure, you know. And I have worked with that quite a lot where I've used silence or, or people wait in anticipation is also a part of the work, I think, especially in public space. Yeah. If, you, if you're thinking about the space you want to create for resonating spaces, what kind of, how would you describe it or what, um, what mood are you looking at creating? Well, I think the recordings will create this, well, wind constantly changes, you know, you have a sort of temperatures a wind and then you have a calm soothing winds but it sort of whips up into a frenzy then it calms and so it's constantly shifting and and as I'm using 12 different tones uh, with these conch shells at times there'll be many tones playing together so it'll have this dissonance this uh, discordant sound it'll be a bit like Dante's Inferno like and then it gets quiet and more more harmonious and so it's constantly shifting through the space like like wind might you know and the different type you know north especially the north wind you know so I was looking at you know uh, I mean I remember this uh, uh, Garcia Marquez book from a, a long time ago where, where he wrote a, a short story about the Tramontana wind which comes from the it's the north wind, you know, and it's and it and it has this um, effect of driving you insane, you know. People, uh, uh, so I mean, I was uh, very interested in that, you know, the psychological effects of, of the wind uh, in, in in literature and um, and this especially this north wind, you know, the boreas wind, the tramontana. Yeah. Great.
this was fantastic. Is there anything you'd like to add or? Yeah, so I was really happy to get a chance to exhibit filter because I made that in like 1998, so long, 20 years ago nearly. And, and, uh, and so this sort of greets people as they come in to the, to the uh, Byler Foundation. And, uh, and but, so it's nice to have this really early work of mine alongside a new work, you know, so I'm really uh, pleased about that. Does it, do you look at the older work differently now, 20 years ago, uh, 20 years later, and are you changing it in any way? Or? No, no, it's just, it's the same um, in, in the, how, how people respond to it. In fact, we, we tested it when we were there the last time and it was really interesting to see how people react, you know, because all of the people are really surprised and, you know, because it's this disembodied voice, it's, I, it's, it's, I, when I make my, when I record my voice, it's clearly not a trained voice, you know, I'm clearly not a trained singer and, and so it could be like I'm just sitting in my bedroom singing by myself and that's kind of what I want. I don't want it to sound like a performing to an audience. So you have this feeling of intimacy, like you're alone uh, to, want to create this sense of solitude. And also the songs that I've chosen to sing are these kind of melancholy pop songs about with these things, that, themes of longing and release and, you know, um, so it kind of creates a tension with this pu public space in this very private moment, you know. So, yeah, and I've, I suppose that's been something that's been in the work, my work, since the start, yeah.